what I'll, uh, I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy my background layer so that I always have a copy uh, just in case we need to go back to it. Then what I'll do is I'll uh, zoom in on one of the eyes and get started on one of the eyes. Uh, the first thing that we'll do is we'll grab our clone stamp tool, uh, make it about 9 or 10 pixels large and uh, at a hardness of 0 up with the brush, and uh, we're going to go ahead and just select the color area of the eye, and we'll press Alt to make a selection and click, and we'll just go ahead and start filling in the uh, pupil area with uh, the uh, other, the regular eye color. And then once you get a uh, larger selection picked out, you can go ahead and make your brush a little bigger and uh, start covering more area with the clone stamp tool. Okay. Now that's looking pretty good. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is we'll make a new layer and we're going to name it Pupil. We'll take our pin tool out of our tool palette. And we're just going to draw a pupil shape. It's got to be a cat-like pupil shape, so let's make it uh, very diamond-like. I'm going to press Control and uh, T on my keyboard so that I can make this longer and skinnier. Then I'm going to go over to my uh, layer palette and uh, click on Paths at the top. And uh, click the uh, dotted path down at the bottom so that I can uh, take my foreground color that is set to black. And go up to Edit, Fill fill to the foreground color and make that pupil black. And then I'll go to my layers and I will deselect that area and I will move the pupil so that it's centered into the middle of the eye. And now you have a cat pupil. Uh, we do want to change the eye still a little bit so we're going to take uh, our uh, elliptical marquee tool and you can just uh, click and hold down and set the elliptical marquee tool up there. And we're going to press shift on the keyboard and click and drag a fairly large uh, circular area and then kind of center it uh, with the pupil in the eye. Uh, we're then going to uh, make an adjustment layer on that on uh, with the pupil layer so, uh, selected so that it'll be above that. Actually, uh, it doesn't really matter, but because uh, we'll move it around later. But what we'll do is we'll make an adjustment layer, uh, hue and saturation adjustment layer, and uh, on that adjustment layer we'll colorize it. We're going to the color uh, kind of orange, orangish yellow going to saturate it uh, to about 50, and we're going to make it a little bit lighter. Uh, something like that, maybe a little yellower, something about like that. You can copy that, that'd be great. Uh, then what we'll do is, like I said, we'll move this hue and saturation layer below the pupil. We'll go up to filter up at the top, down to blur, and down to Gaussian blur. I'm going to set my blur to around 5 uh, or 6 pixels. Let's do 6, and then press OK. And that's the result that you want, and that's what you want your eye to look like. That's a very feline-looking eye now. Uh, I'm going to go on to my uh, pupil layer, and I'm going to select a brush, and I'm going to change the uh, foreground color to white, and I'm going to go ahead and add an accent to that uh, pupil as well. Very small brush. Just add a small accent, something kind of like that. And that'll look pretty good, especially when, you're, uh, when you back out a little ways. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll zoom out a little bit, and I'll just show you the difference between the two eyes. Um, right now, we have a cat eye and a human eye. Uh, for the next step, we're going to go ahead and take the pupil layer, and we're going to copy it. We're going to take the hue and saturation layer that we made and copy it. And then what we'll do is we'll select our background copy layer that we made originally, and we're going to uh, take a selection of that. Actually, let's not do that. Uh, let's just go ahead and zoom in right on that eye. And let's just start doing the same thing that we did before. With our background copy layer selected, we'll take a clone stamp tool and we'll make it small again, around 8 or 9 or 10 pixels. And we'll make a selection of the area that we want to do. And we're going to just start filling in the pu uh, pupil of this eye. You can make multiple selections and just kind of fill in that whole eye. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit less during this as I just showed you how to do this. If you need to, uh, go back in the video and, uh, and rewatch this part on the first eye. Okay. Now since we made copies of uh, that hue and saturation, we should be just drag that over. 
there it is. We'll just drag that onto that eye. And we're going to take the pupil copy and drag that over as well. And we put it in the center of the eye. And now uh, we made those copies and we made that eye a lot quicker. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to take this background copy layer and I'm going to copy that. Uh, so I'll press Control J on the keyboard. Now I have background copy too. I'm going to rename this liquify. And, uh, and actually, I'm going to call this one Liquify Nose. I'll press OK. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and copy that layer. Control J on the keyboard, or you can drag it down into your layer. I'm going to rename that one Liquify Mouth. The reason that I'm doing this is because we are going to use our Liquify filter, and it's very easy to mess up with the Liquify filter, so I'd like to keep that on its own separate layers. Um, and. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to select my liquify mouth layer and make a layer mask on it. And I want to delete much of the, the, the uh, upper part of the layer other than the mouth. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, take my uh, selection tool and I'm going to just select the mouth area. And that's all I really want. So. Uh, just open the, my layers palette here, and uh, I'm going to select the inverse, go up to select, select inverse, and I'll just press uh, delete on the keyboard. And now uh, all I have on that layer is the mouth, and I should be able to warp that uh, OK. And for a liquify nose, I'll do the same thing, except for I just want the nose. so. I will make a selection kind of like this, and I will, um, like I said, I'll do the same thing. So I'll just add a layer mask. Now I should have just the nose on that one. So now, if you see uh, I do or I disable this layer, you can see that uh, those two layers are now enabled, and that's all we have of those. Um, on our original background layer, since all we did on that were the eyes, let's go ahead and just, uh, actually, let's keep that whole thing, pretty much, other than the nose and the mouth. So what I'll do is just kind of crop out the nose and the mouth in, in this original layer. So I'll select inverse. And if, uh, if any part of the face disappears, we just brush it back in, and that's the great part of these uh, layer masks. So I'll just delete the mouth out of that layer. And so now I'll go to uh, deselect that, and I'll go to my uh, my, uh, my uh, liquify nose layer. I'll go to filter, down to liquify, and I can uh, start liquefying the nose. And it shows you everything, even though you've created that... Um, mask. Um, and it'll still be masked when you're done, but it'll just show you everything so that you can liquefy freely. It's actually quite nice. And uh, the point of the doing this is just kind of make everything look less human. Um, something about like that on the nose is probably actually pretty good. Um, just to make it kind of small, a little bit more cat-like. I'll press OK on that. And uh, you can see that that's how that looks. Uh, I'll go to my liquify mouth layer. And I'll go up to filter. Down to liquify. And I'm going to try to make this one look a lot less human. I'll pull the bottom lip up a little bit. Kind of like that. And maybe pull that down just a hair. Kind of do something. Maybe give her a little bit too much of a smile to make it little bit just really warped and uh, non-human like maybe a little bit smaller lips um, and kind of the trick with the liquify tool is small changes um, 
may already be getting into dangers, danger zone uh, with changing it a little too much. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and just kind of stop right there. And that looks uh, very non-human. Possibly a little bit more cat-like. I'm going to go with that. Okay, we'll press OK. And now you can see that, uh, oh, and like I said, uh, we lost a little bit of the corner of this mouth, so we're going to have to brush that back in in our liquify mouth layer. We'll uh, select our, our uh, actually, we would do that in our background. Uh, okay, so we'll select our, our, clip, our mask in our liquify mouth layer, and we will um, go ahead and use our brush. Let me make sure it's in that layer, actually. It's not in that. It is in that layer. Okay, so we'll brush that part back in. Sorry, I was kind of thinking that out there. But uh, it was in that, uh, in that layer that was uh, clipped off. So what we did is we I grabbed the brush tool, uh, we selected that uh, layer mask, and we just brushed that part back in so that the liquefied part shows up. Okay, uh, the last thing that we want to do is uh, mess around with this ear. So what I'll do, actually, and I've already made a selection, and I've grabbed a, a picture of a cat, and I've selected its ear. I'll uh, press Control c and make a copy of that. I'm going to go ahead and just plop that right in. And I'm going to uh, put it on top of everything. I'll rename it ear. Uh, as you can see, the ear is pointing the wrong direction, so I'll go up to Edit transform and flip horizontally. I will then go to edit, transform, scale, and I'll just drag, uh, hold down shift and drag the corner down until it's about the right size, same size of the ear, a little bit smaller, perhaps. Put it right over the top. Uh, I'll make a, a layer mask on that. I'll grab my eraser, make sure the hardness is at zero, and I'm going to erase the bottom edge of the ear and the uh, right edge of the ear and just kind of lay it right over the top of the human ear take any hard edges away okay and then uh, what we'll do is uh, we're going to leave it normal uh, but what we'll do is we'll add an adjustment layer or let's not add an adjustment layer but we'll add, make an adjustment on it so we'll go up to image down to adjustments and hue and saturation. And what we'll do is we're just going to uh, try to match it to the skin color of the woman. So we'll just drag this top hue to the left a little bit, saturation down just a hair, but mo most importantly we're going to make this darkness uh, a lot less. And we can saturate it a bit more. And try, to, try to match the color of the lady's ear. Move the hues a little bit. Looks like that's pretty close. Uh, maybe make it a little darker. Saturate a little bit more. And the name of the game is just to kind of play around with it a little bit. And we'll press OK. As you can see, that doesn't uh, have that big of a change. So what I'll do is I'll click on that ear layer. And we're going to liquefy that. So we'll go up to Filter and to Liquify. And we're going to make that ear pointier. And that way, it will look like a cat's ear on her ear. Okay. And then press OK. Uh, I did a little erasing there, so I'll go into my, uh, my, my mask there, and I'm going to brush that back in. And that should be pretty close to our final result. You might want to take a soft... Um, brush and erase any hard edges of this ear. Oh, I still have the brush on. Uh, take the eraser and, and uh, maybe just kind of brush away any hard edges of that ear like I was saying.